Well, sir, it's late afternoon as we approach the small house halfway up in the next block now, and here on the front porch we find Mr. and Mrs. Victor Gook. Sade is swinging gently in the swing, and Vic, who has just this moment arrived home from the office, prepares to seat himself beside her. Listen. Willie out and back? Yeah. What doing? Sitting on the steps. He's mad. So I get it. I was at pains to wish him a jolly good afternoon and received only a sullen rejoinder. <laughs> He's mad at his mother. Why? Oh, she went downtown and bought him clothes for school. Seems to me he'd be overjoyed. He wants to pick out his own clothes. A feeling common to youth. As a boy, I used to want to pick out my own clothes. Did you pick them out? No. Hand over this sheaf of letters, telegrams, and cables that arrived during my absence. Mailman never even stopped. Walked right on past. Next time I see him, I'll thrash him within an inch of his life. Certainly left a big batch of stuff at Scott's. Must have been a dozen pieces of mail he left. They correspond around till who laid the chunk. I expect the thing of it is, she's got five sisters, and writing letters back and forth with yes, that many... Yes, sunshine. <laughs> Mad as a wet hen. His mother wouldn't let him buy his own clothes. You know what he'd do, don't you? He'd pick out the loudest, crashiest junk in town. Hello there, Tom Clamp, old mashy shot. I wouldn't rile him up any more than he is. What's he got to be riled about? Seems to me we tolerate considerable temperament around this place. Come on up and sit in the shade, Willie. Join me and my lady friend here. We're going to rob a bank and make our getaway and escape over the state line to Missouri. We want you to lead the police off on a false scent. Miss Harris just come along the alley, ma'am. She said to tell you she wouldn't be a symbol meeting. Oh, really? Say why? Oh, really? I'm going to call you up after supper and explain. Well, thanks for delivering the message. Mm. Where are you going? Down and back. Where are you going? Down and back. Where are you going? Down and back. Grand, they go round and back. Do join us, foot back. I can't bear to think of you in the backyard breathing yourself to death. Come on up and sit down. Your mother and I are cracking jokes and singing songs. I wouldn't have come around in front at all if Miss Harris hadn't come along with that message. <laughs> Don't be mad at me anymore, Sonny. Yeah, you two fellas shake hands. Uh, you two fellas shake hands. Uh, you two fellas... Sh Benjamin Franklin spoke those immortal words while peeling a banana on the outskirts of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He was barefooted at the time, and although he was wearing a catcher's mitt, he aroused suspicion Here, by his... Sit down. Not enough room. I'll squeeze over. I'll sit on the railing. They tell me you're peeved, Dorothy. They tell me angry fires seethe in your breast and hot tears fill oh, the Oh, leave them be. Okay. Anybody got a hunk of eating tobacco in their pocket? I haven't had a chew all day. Mom, as long as this business about my coat clothes is all cut and dried, I suppose we might as well get to the bottom of it. Uh, bottom of it? What am I supposed to do tomorrow? Go down to Yamilton's and Kleeberger's? And Emson's. Emson's? Yes. You never bought shoes for me. I bought a good substantial pair of shoes. You actually walked calmly into a shoe store and bought shoes for a great big 14-year-old high school guy? Oh, Lance Rash, let's not go through the same rigmarole we went through when I got home this afternoon. Nobody or... was with you. I told you Ruthie was along. You knew Ruthie was along. You heard me telephone this morning. You paraded my shame before Ruthie. Ruthie knows Miss you... Miss Dembottom, please, mister. What? Miss Dembottom, not Ruthie. I'll call her Ruthie. You call her Miss Dembottom. She saw you actually walk calmly in a shoe store and buy shoes for a 14-year-old high school student? With her own naked eyes, she wouldn't... I'm getting a little tired of this monkey business, Willie. And quit screwing your face around into them wild expressions. You're not the dying fawn in the movie picture show. You think your mother buying your clothes for you makes you out a little child. Well, if it looks that way, I'm sorry. But it's the sensible thing to do, and besides, it's already done. Now sit up and quit acting like a horse had fell on you. How'd you go about this, Sade? Seems to me you'd have to have had soup ladle along in order to get the correct sizes. He'll get the correct sizes when he shows up at the different stores tomorrow. Oh, you picked out a suit and then had the clerk lay it aside and... and... told him my little boy had come in to be fitted. Oh, I see. Same way with shoes. I selected what I wanted, and when Willie drops by, they'll give me his size in that particular style. Pretty smart dodge. Yeah. <laughs> Ruthie give me flattering compliments on my smartness. Mm. I was smart about the calf I bought, too. 
In there at Kleeberger's, I told you. You bought me a cap? What? You bought me a cap? Yeah. I wanted a hat. Cap is best for school. Hat gets crushed and ruined five seconds after you put it on your head. Oh. Yeah? Cap is best for school. Oh. Don't bother making outlandish noises, son. Instead of raising a fuss like you're doing, you ought to be happy as a lark. Your parents can afford to buy you lovely new school outfits. It's right, Moose Jaw. You're not bad off. I'm almost a grown-up adult, and my mother picks out my clothes for me. I got a new suit, and I don't even know what it looks like. Got a new I'll pants. tell you what it looks like. Blue serge. Very neat and trim. The pants has got them zipper do funnies, and there's a real sporty belt on the coat you like. Well, we'll look like a... The shoes dollar. are brown. A reddish brown, I guess you'd call it. They're serviceable and strong and can stand the gap. Nothing flashy about them, of course. I expect the cap is a good substantial... The cap is a good common sense plaid. It didn't cost much, but if you take halfway decent care of it, it'll hold its shape and stay presentable a good long time. Did Ruthie titter and snort when you told the clerks your little boy What did I say not... about that Ruthie business? Did she titter and snort? Maybe and... when you're 21, you can say Ruthie. I think for a while yet, though, you'd better say Miss Dembottom. Did she titter and snort? I don't think I like them words very well. Did she laugh at the idea of a lady picking out clothes for a fella as big and as old as I am? No. It's a wonder. By George, I don't see how a common, ordinary American citizen can hold on to their self-respect when their mother treats them like a half-witted half-wit that ain't got this... I think we've had enough of this. By George, when civilization has sunk so low... Listen, then I'll tell you what you're supposed to do tomorrow. And we'll drop the subject. Mm -hmm. In at Hamilton's, you're supposed to ask for Mr. Richards. He's the clerk waited on me this afternoon. He'll get out the suit I bought and then find one on the rack exactly like it's your size. What if I see a suit I like better? What if I you see a won't. suit I... All right, that takes care of Hamilton's. At Kleeberger's, ask for Mr. White. He's the young fellow with the nose glasses. Just say you're... I'm Rush Gook and my mother picked out a cap for me. Yes. And when you try them on, be sure and get one big enough. Last cap you bought left a dent around your head when you took it off. A person could hide their pocketbook in. Maybe I ought Lee to Burgers, Mr. White. The Hamiltons, Mr. Richards. And don't forget. In Empson's shoe store, inquire for Mr. Spence. Bald-headed fella. I believe he's got an artificial leg, too. Scrounged down awful peculiar and stuck it out straight behind him when he sat down on the little stool. For an individual my you age... You got them names straight? I asked you a question. I said, have you got them names straight? Biggers, Knight, and Fence. Richards, White, and Spence. Mm hmm. Remember him now. Otherwise, you'll get in a muddle. Mm. No joking, kiddo. That's a pretty smart stunt. Pick out exactly what you want, and then always send Oyster Cracker down to get the right side. You've got ingenuity. Where are you going? Out and back. What you gonna do? Nothing. Sit on the steps and sulk and feel sorry for yourself? I wish to be alone. You gotta trot to the store for groceries after bed. So don't go running off any place. Man with a breaking heart. Uh huh. I suppose his spirit is just as agonized over this as that of a great businessman beset by difficulties. Mm -hmm, I suppose. The intensity of the suffering from a person's troubles is the same whether the person is young or old. Uh -huh. The infant who's denied the rattly desires is no more or no less distressed than the desperate banker who finds shortages in his accounts. Mm hmm. And a 14-year-old boy who isn't permitted to select his own clothes endures the same misery Mr. as... Mr. Carl, the home from work. Huh? Mr. Carl, walking along the sidewalk. Hmm. Must be time to start supper. Hmm. Come in the house with me. You can help. Grind the meat and crack mm. the English walnuts. Okay. Which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block. And...